welcome, welcome, welcome to Health Issues. Your host, Chris Sylvain. Truly excited about this show. You know, we're always talking about health. We're talking about nutrition, and, um, but we're talking about the things that kill folk. And we have an awesome guest. I'm talking about a great surgeon, a great physician here. Uh, move uh, right back to the city, Dr. Albert Sam. How are you, Doc? Hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for having us. No, excited to have you. Believe me, um, your area of study, your area of medicine, um, I think it's critical in this day and time. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about yourself. You're a vascular surgeon. What is that? That's correct. A vascular surgeon. And really, the term surgeon is a misnomer. About 60 to 80% of what I do is non-surgical. Wow. But essentially what we do is we treat the vascular system. Okay. And there are other physicians that try to treat the vascular system, and they do a good job in their own right. Okay. But we're the only physicians that can treat the vascular system medically, surgically, or from an interventional standpoint. Okay. And so that's essentially what I do. My field has evolved over the years. It's a relatively young specialty. It was okay. begun in the early 1980s. It used to be a part of general surgery and heart surgery, right. but it became so specialized, not only from the pharmacological standpoints, being drugs and medicines that we give, right. to surgeries that we do that have become more complex. It eventually morphed into its own specialty in the mid to late 80s. And so that's what I do. Essentially, all I do is deal with blood vessels, Okay. that can become diseased, All right. that are not in the heart, because that's what cardiologists do, okay. or heart surgeons, okay. or blood vessels that are actually in the brain. That's what wow. neuroradiologists do. Wow. So essentially, blockages in the neck, Okay. almost half of all strokes are caused by blockages here, wow. blockages in the abdomen, which can lead to poor circulation, or aneurysm formation that can rupture and cause death. Really? In fact, aneurysm rupture is the third leading cause of sudden death in men over 65. Really? And blockages in the legs. Blockage in the legs is the leading cause of amputations in our country. The highest amputation rate by the Medicare data database is Louisiana. And the highest pocket of people who require amputations are in the South Louisiana corridor between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, where the rate is about five times the national average. So obviously there's plenty of disease here to treat, which is why I'm here in New Orleans. Fantastic, and you're right at uh, Tulane University's uh, teach at the School of Medicine and uh, practice the whole bit. You're chief of vascular surgery over there. That's correct. I've been named the, the chief of uh, vascular and endovascular surgery at Tulane Medical School, and you know, I took that position approximately a month and a half ago. Hey, welcome. Welcome, it's good welcome. To be here. Right out of Brother Martin, Tulane, right. Morehouse man, That's Renaissance right. man. That's right, yeah. <laughs> proud Morehouse man, our HBCUs, I'm proud to say. And then I, I left there and went to Duke University for my medical school training. Um, and after that, I went to Chicago, where I did nine years of training. I did um, my general surgery at the University of Illinois. Okay. I did a two year research fellowship there and did a master's in physiology at that time point. After that, I went to Northwestern across, this, across town and did my vascular fellowship because that's how you become a subspecialist. Okay. So I did that for two years, did aneurysm research there, and then took a job in Baton Rouge in 2003. I All was right. in private practice for 10 years before I became the chief at Tulane. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's deal with the stuff. Sure. This, this, this concept, like you said, so it's uh, vascular surgery or whatever, vascular care, the neck and the abdomen and the, and the legs. That's correct. All right, everywhere else or whatever. So what's going on in there? We call it, what, what's happening? The vasculature is, uh, that's the blood vessels themselves. That's, that's right. Blood vessels essentially like highways. Okay. There are two types of blood vessels. You have arteries. All right. And then you have veins. All right. People don't usually break them out that way. In fact, I ask patients all the time, what's the difference between an artery and a vein? Okay. And they say one is deep and one is, is close <laughs> to the skin. And that's close. But for the most part, they're both blood vessels, but they have very different functions. Okay. Arteries carry blood from the heart to the rest of the body. All right. Whereas veins, they take the blood the arteries have pumped to the other parts of the body, okay. and they transport the blood back to the heart. Okay. So there are a whole array of diseases that can happen in the arteries, All right. which are very different than the diseases that can happen in the veins. Really? Right. The arterial diseases are sexy diseases. Those are the ones that get all the attention. But for every one person that has a disease of the arteries, you have about six people walking around with diseases of the veins. Really? But it's just that venous problems are not as impactful to your life or your limb or your well-being 
as arterial diseases. Okay. So essentially that's the difference between the two. They're both blood vessels, right. but they do very different things. It's like having two highways. You have I-10 and I-12. Right. They're both highways, right? Right. But they'll take you different places. <laughs> All right. Let's, hey, curiosity. Let's talk right. about the venous issues and sure. let's talk about the arterial issues. Sure. For the most part, like I said, for every one person with arterial problems, you have six people with venous problems. Okay, varicose veins. Varicose, that's one of them. Varicose they have veins. Big billboards all over right now. That's, that's for 150 right. bucks or whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe I probably have it confused. But you can get your varicose veins removed. That's right. Varicose veins usually underlies a more deeper structural problems with the veins. Remember, the veins will transport the blood from the legs back to the heart. Okay. When that, and most of the time, that's going to be a, a process that occurs against gravity. Okay. Because most of the time you're standing or All sitting right. upright. Mm -hmm. In order for that to happen, you have to have the valves inside the vein open and close in a way that lets blood go up, but prevents blood from coming back down. Against gravity. Right. Blood has to fly back has up to, fly to the back heart. up. Because when you contract your muscle, muscles in your legs, it squeezes on the veins, which pushes the blood up. Okay. But then when those muscles relax again, uh -huh. the blood wants to fall right back down with gravity. Okay. That's when those valves should close. Very common, 25% of all women, 12% of all men, that valve system fails. And so you get a lot of blood that pools in the lower legs. And then you have basically too much blood in your legs. And that can be a problem. Mm. It can cause pain, discomfort, because the veins get too big. They press on nerves, which are next to the veins. Mm -hmm. It can cause like a toothache of the vein, like an aching, throbbing sensation, usually after a long day of work. Wow. And then when you prop your feet up, it helps things feel better because it eases the flow of that blood back to the heart. Okay. Over long periods of time, the blood cells break down and the pigment that carries the oxygen begins to get into the soft tissues. Okay. Once blood gets into the soft tissues, it's an irritant and it can cause darkening of the skin, usually inside by the ankle, which can become, become an ulceration. Mm. Once it becomes an ulceration, it's really hard to treat at that point. So we like to treat you before that. And we have some techniques that are pretty good in treating it before it reaches that point. So that's the guy with the billboards. Those are the people with the billboards, <laughs> but we can do it best at Tulane. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. All right. So um, that, that's the major, that's one of those with, with the vein issues. But the heart, like you say, you call yeah. that the sexy uh, issues. Yeah. That's the big so, heart attack. Right, so people can live with venous problems and, and, and do okay, and you never know it. Okay. When you have arterial problems, that's right. when you lose your legs. That's when you lose your life. That's when you lose you know, function because of strokes. Hmm. So that's why it gets much more attention. The way vascular disease occurs of the arteries, there are five essential causes. There's high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol. There's smoking, okay? And also, there's just family history. Some families are g genetically predisposed to have all these problems. Wow, New Orleans. Right, and so, if we talk about New Orleans, and in a more global aspect, we can talk about the stroke belt. So the southeastern United States has a much higher incidence of, say, one of the peripheral vascular disease types that results in stroke. Why? A couple of reasons. Number one, obviously our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is about what? Overindulgement. It's about... Uh, Le bon ton roulé. Yeah, 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 exactly. I wish I could say it as eloquently as you, but I can't. <laughs> it was on know? TV. So uh, we tend to overeat, and we tend to overeat on most of the things that we shouldn't overeat with. We tend to lead a sedentary life, mm. as Southerners do. Why is that? Number one, it's hot. You know, this is not Vermont. This is not Washington State. It's hot outside. So we're less likely to be able to do things year-round outdoors. Number three, we're less likely to be well-educated in the southeastern part of the country. Because of our educational system, there's a direct inverse correlation. The worse educated you are, the more likely you're going to have vascular problems. Why is that? If you're less educated, you're more likely to smoke. If you're less educated, you're more likely to not know the importance of exercise. Right. You, if you're less educated, you're more likely to, to eat things that taste good, but you just don't realize that they're not good for you. So all those things work against us in the South. Plus, in the southeastern corridor of the United States, we're more likely to be black or brown. Black and brown people have higher incidences of all the diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, and all that, which eventually results in having arterial problems. So a lot of things are working against us in the South. 
So this is five times the national average as far as for people contracting the disease and so and eventually dying from it. Well, well, that figure is not for all of the South. Okay. And the African Americans, black folks, us, we, we have a much higher incidence, say a five-time incidence of having arterial disease that may result in leg amputations right. than others. Okay. Our stroke risk is maybe twice as high. Okay, our risk, but conversely, we have lower incidences of other disease processes. For instance, the vascular disease that can cause aneurysm rupture right. is much lower in the black communities than it is in other communities. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that um, somewhat uh, being brown or black can kind of be somewhat protective against. Okay, genetic or is just more of our lifestyle? And, and that's the reason. When we talk about aneurysm disease, that's mostly a genetically predisposed thing that we okay. see mold, mostly in older uh, white individuals, mm -hmm. less likely in black individuals. But if you have a higher incidence of having diabetes, high blood pressure, that then leads you to have a higher incidence of the diseases that can cause stroke and limb loss. All right. So uh, let's talk about this, this, this vessel here. Sure. And what's, go what's, what's going on? What, um, you said it, it's not a clot. You had talked about that earlier. It's not sure. a clot. It's not like it just get clogged up like a drain pipe. No. When, when you use the term clots, and a lot of people do, um, that's different than what happens in the arteries. Clots typically happen in veins. Oh, so okay. we talked initially about venous problems. Right. So if, if you have venous problems, too much blood in your veins, the valves don't work, it increases the chances that the blood will clot abnormally in those veins and cause what we call a deep vein thrombosis, say DVT. All right. That's typically what we refer to as when we're saying clots, okay? Why is that important? That's important because, you know, they're actually very common in our country. If you go in any hospital, fully a quarter of all people in any hospitals are going to have some evidence of clot in the deep veins, okay? okay? In fact, the complications from those clots breaking off and going to the lungs kills more people every year than breast cancer or AIDS combined because they're so common and so prevalent, okay? okay. So when we, see, when we speak of clots, that's what we're speaking about. In the arteries, and it's in the veins, in the arteries we're talking about plaque. Okay. Clots develop fairly quickly. For instance, commonly a young man, car accident, long bone fracture, gets gets the long bone fixed, going home, all of a sudden they die, leaving the hospital, okay? Because the injury in the immobilized leg, the veins weren't being pumped like they normally would, clot developed in the vein, broke off and traveled to the lung. Not trying to scare your audience or anything, but essentially that's a clot. Happens suddenly. Whereas a plaque happens over time. Okay. Plaques happen over many years of bad behavior, we like to say. Many years of not keeping your blood pressure under control. Okay. Many years of not controlling your diet and thus becoming diabetic. Many okay. years of smoking. You know, many years of not watching your cholesterol. Mm. Okay. That process starts actually in the youth. We've been able to show that even young kids now okay. who are developing type 2 diabetes because they're overweight, can have precursor changes in their blood vessels, which down the road we know is going to be a vessel that's going to have plaque develop and thus get you on my operating room table. So you can even look at little kids now and uh, check inside that vessel sure. and, and see what will we see in the vessel. Sure. Well, what are the things we talked about that um, predispose you? Poor diets, poor behaviors, and a lack of exercise. Okay. Kids now, their diets are much worse than when we were children. Right. They're less active than we, when we were kids. Right. You know, and that's not all their fault. I have children. You try to get their video game out of their hands <laughs> and tell them to go outside and play? You know, right. It's, right. It's almost impossible. Right. right. Plus, it's hotter now than it used to be. Yeah. Okay? That's right. Okay. Okay. I used Good to be able point. to play forever and, and, and not get burned. 